Hi guys, how you doing? Saturday today, and I'm out in the woods. I'm leading a foraging walk here tomorrow, and uh, it's actually a private client that's booked me, someone who's uh, lottery funded or art council funded, I can't remember which. They're putting on a, uh, a performance and it's based on the theme of mushrooms. So they've paid me to take them out tomorrow and uh, talk about mushrooms. That's one of my favorite things to do. So that's fantastic. So I'm just doing a recce today. We found a fair amount already, to be fair, more than I was expecting. The beauty of tomorrow's walk is it's focused on mushrooms, not necessarily edible mushrooms. So it really does broaden the scope of what we're looking for, which is great. So yesterday I trimmed the goat's feet, which was a job that was in need of doing. So that's all done, they're much happier now. One of our goats is struggling a little bit to produce enough milk for her girls. So we're supplementing a couple of the kids with a bit of bottle fed milk for the time being. And we'll, I'll show you that later today, I'm sure. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much all I've got to report. It's been a pretty slow week insofar as homesteading. It's been the usual routine of work, home, maintain, and go again. So I thought I'd check in here from the woods. Doesn't look like I'm in a wood <laughs> at the moment, but I am. It's an ancient woodland and we'll, we'll go over the other side of this ridge in a minute and we'll be in some really old oaks and beech trees. So uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you a bit later. <laughs> you don't look ridiculous, love. You look lovely. So it's dawned on me sort of halfway around this walk that these dogs are going back in my car. <laughs> and it's ridiculously muddy. We're gonna head that way now. And it's ridiculously muddy and they just don't care. It's particularly Conker. That's the little one on the right there. Look at him. <laughs> so that was our morning and it was lovely. Lovely to get out with Jackie and the dogs. Uh, the kids are old enough now, they all just stay here and do their own thing quite happily. So we've got back, I've had some lunch, and Jackie's taken my daughter off to my in-laws, the boys are still here. So we've gone out, collected the eggs, checked on the goats, etc, etc. And uh, I've come to light the fire, it's really cold today, really, really chilly. Come to light the fire and we've got a bit of a problem. The flu just hasn't had much of a draw on it last few days. It's been a bit of a struggle to get the fire going. And today, no dice at all. And the only way I could do it is by opening up the front of the fire and this room was just filling with smoke. So the flu needs sweeping. Now we have our flu swept every single year. It's a condition of the insurance, etc. So, you know, it's something we do do and we keep on top of. But for whatever reason, and I really, I, I can't work it out. It's bugging me because this is a new fire. We've replaced this fire fairly recently. And since this new fire went in, the flu seems to get clogged so much more regularly and i won't lie you know this was the cheapest fire we could get it was at the time it was that or nothing it was last winter i think it was either the start of this winter or last winter i can't remember but it was a, a point at which we needed the fire so we got the only one we could afford which is a really cheap one and yeah it's just absolutely just done so i am now i've, I've called our chimney sweep he can't get here for another month Neither can anyone else. So I'm gonna go and buy my own set of chimney brushes and see if I can do it myself. So it's not something I'd ever plan to do myself. The thing is, you know, we need it done professionally for the certificate every year for the insurance. But outside that, I can't think of a reason why I can't do it myself. So uh, yeah, that's my next job and it's not what I planned on doing this afternoon. But uh, there you go. So I'm gonna to have to go off and find some chimney brushes. <laughs> Been to screw fix. I've got uh, my new chimney sweeping kit. Let's get home and take care of it. So here we are. I've got my chimney brush and I've got drain rods. I cannot believe I don't own a set of drain rods. I, I just can't tell you why that's the case. I've used them several times. I've owned them in the past but for whatever reason I don't have any, so I had to buy some of these. But I have to say, I can't remember how much they were, but it was something like 30 quid for the lot. So 30 English pounds for the brush and the rods. And of course, these are something that you really want to have in your toolbox anyway. 
for clearing the block drains. And I would have quite happily spent 50 pounds or more to have the chimney sweep come and do this. So if this works, I'm actually quids in. And uh, even though we're only here for a few more weeks, it's very cold at the moment and it will probably save us that versus not being able to light the fire. So yeah, it's money well spent. This isn't a how-to video. It's just how I am video, how I'm doing it. I've never done this before. And I'm really learning as I go. I can't do it straight away. You can see there's still embers in there because I did manage to light the fire, but it was just all just a smoky mess. This just screws on the end like that. And then these rods are quite bendy, so we'll be able to get it up there. Now, one thing I've already thought about, if you're gonna have a go at this yourself, we're gonna to wanna to be spinning that up there, but we wanna be very careful because if we got it up there and we started spinning it that way, it could theoretically come unscrewed and we'd end up with that suck up the flue. So you wanna bear that in mind. You wanna keep spinning the rod in the same direction that tightens the thread. Um, so I'm gonna, I think, let me just check how hot the actual flue is because that's not hot at all. And the reason being for that, that we've had this door open, had all the doors in the kitchen open and the window in the kitchen open and this door open just to allow what was in there to burn down to allow me to do this job. So I'm gonna put some water on those embers now and uh, put them out, cool them down and then hopefully we'll be able to sweep straight away. It's gonna be a bit like a sauna in here, I think. That's all going to be cool enough now to put in our metal ash bin. Along with the roses I bought my wife last week, didn't last very long. And of course all this would usually just go up on the compost. Now I know our chimney sweep when he comes, he's got one of these which is um, Instead of these brushes, it's chains. So much stronger, much more aggressive. So uh, we'll just have to see how we get on. Hmm. There's a big plate in the top that uh, blocks access to the flue. So let's try and work out how you remove that. Okay, step one complete. I think that gives us access to the flue. Maybe not. <laughs> Sorry, have you got your phone with you? Could I use it just a torch on it just for a second? Thanks, buddy. Okay. It's just a very, very small hole that I'm aiming for. Um, would you mind helping, just, just holding this while I put the brush up for the first time? Is that okay? So if you could hold it like there, like that, that'd be really helpful. Yeah. Very tight fit. Right, let's see if we can get up there now. So I'll just show you guys. That's the little hole we've got to get it through. And it really is quite small. I want to show you just next to my son's phone, the size of it. So I don't know how we're going to squeeze this up there, but I know it goes, it's got to, it's got to fit. So uh, just a bit of perseverance. I might have to lie down on my back. We'll figure it out. Now, if any of you out there are chimney sweeps or have swept your own chimney successfully in the past, feel free to laugh at me and let me know how ridiculous I am. Alternatively, feel free to give me any tips in the comments, not just for me, but for other people watching, because I am quite certain 
This isn't the best way. <laughs> Oh, we're going. We're in. We're in. We're also in my eye. Ow. It's a hell of a lot coming out. So I think I might have to, what I'm thinking, what I'm worried about, is that as the brush is going up, it's accumulating stuff on top of it. So I think I might need to pull the whole brush out now, clear up and then go again. But how far are we? We, we, we are, we're there. And you see how much further we've got to go. So, uh, plus, a little, plus a little bit out onto the roof. So it might take a little while, but I'm really happy that I'm doing it and that it's working. Just see if we can go any further. No, it's really blocked there, so pull this out. What I might do, in fact, now what I hadn't thought about was how we're going to get it out. <laughs> you see how I had it folded over when I put it in? I don't think it's going to come out. carbon monoxide alarm. Would you open the door, son, for that? That's our carbon monoxide alarm going off. So we're going to open all the doors and windows just to be on the safe side. So what I might do is switch to this, which is part of the drain rod set, and see if we can't just get a lot of the worst of it knocked out with that. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim chim. <laughs> So let's have a, a, a mid session tidy up. This is the first lot to come out the flue. Second lot. That's definitely the way to go with that first. We've got four in there at the moment. This is three together. I'm just going to see and have a look at the cowl. So I've just got the three here to have a look at what compares to the right height. And I would say that's the top of our chimney there. So I would say, yeah, we've got a fourth one on and that's about right. So this is our fourth one. So that's the top of the cowl. Just a good wiggle every couple of feet bringing down a fair amount. Once I've done this, I'll send the brush up again and then I'm, I'm actually feeling pretty good. I'm feeling quite confident. I'm feeling quite happy that I've done a reasonable job, a good enough job, you know? So now, I'll go the brush once more and I think I'm gonna consider this swept. Right, let's get this up there. I can feel it. Feel the difference where it's clean and where it's not. And we're getting there. And you can see the brush there, just about, if you look closely. See the brush sticking out the top. Fantastic. There we go. Done. So, I mean, I mentioned this, the cost of this. It was, the actual brush, I think, was around a tenner, about 10 pounds. And as you can see, it's obviously not what a professional would use. It's not going to last, I wouldn't think, too many sweeps, but it would do a few. And uh, when you think the cost of getting a chimney sweep out, it, it's just, oh, just, I'm really proud of myself that I've, not just for doing it, but for making the decision to do it and have a go, have a go homesteader. You know, doing these things that perhaps are a little bit out of reach or that we feel are out of reach 
but maybe they're not. Right, got to do a bit of clearing up now and then the proof of the pudding will be in the fire. Number three. Number four. So another thing we've noticed over the last few days was just the, as the, because the flue was so blocked, just the tiniest amount of smoke was occasionally seeping out from this joint in the flue. So I bought some fire cement, which again is inexpensive, and I'm just using a knife to work it into that joint. And I'm just working it in there. It looked like there was a tiny bit of fire cement that cracked away here. And then again, I'm pushing it down, working it into the joint. Now, I'm not sure how long you're supposed to leave this before you light the fire. But as I say, it was just the tiniest little gap. So I'm not overly concerned with it. And I can always redo it tomorrow. Um, I really want to light the fire just to check that I've done everything I need to do with the sweeping. That's it, I think we're done. Sweep your chimney, governor. <laughs> I'm now a chimney sweep. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> so it's not a job that I will, I think I'll do like every time ourselves because it is something that it's nice to have the peace of mind that a professional's done it and it's done right, etc., etc. But knowing that I can, knowing that if something like today happens, I'm speaking too soon, I haven't lit the fire yet, let's check, but if it all goes well, you know, I'll know that if something like today happens and we get a blockage and the chimney sweep can't come for another month, I can do it myself. These are, you know, invaluable bits of kit that I can just put in storage now and I know they're there to save me. Brilliant, right, let's get it lit. It worked, I'm so happy, I'm so proud of myself. So I've just lit it. The, the door is still all sooted up, so it's not very clear to see, but the fire's lit, the door's closed, and we, we couldn't get it to light with the door closed. So it's worked, the chimney's free, the flue is free, we're all good. So that is almost, almost everything for today. But before we go, let's pop out and uh, see our baby goats. Share them with you for a moment, and uh, you can have a look at them drinking on the bottles. And by the time we get back in the house, that will be roaring, I hope. <laughs> And you've obviously noticed my wife is home from her parents and we've had some more great news today, which I'll share with you after feeding time. So the reason we're bottle feeding at all, and we're not doing a lot, we're doing two feeds a day on um, this goat's kids, because as you can see, her udders are almost empty. For some reason, she dried herself up. And uh, you just really struggled, haven't you, to create milk this year? I have no idea why, but um, we're overfeeding her now and giving her loads and loads and loads. And she's, you know, the milk's gradually coming in. The kids are still drinking from mum, so there's still that demand there which mum's body is slowly responding to. So we're kind of getting over it, but uh, yeah, it's just helped them gotta get over a little hump when she initially didn't have any. Hey fella. So yeah, the good news is about rhubarb. We found a home for her, which is just this amazing home. It's somewhere my father-in-law delivers wood to, 
and the lady's got a load of sheep there. They're just pets, they're all pets. And my daughter Finn can go and visit whenever she wants. It's just gonna, it's just the perfect outcome. So we've now officially got homes for all of our large animals. Now let's go back inside and have a look at what the farm is doing. Now yesterday it would have gone, but we're still lit. Look at that. So we are officially job done. Chalk that one off the list. And again, yesterday, if I'd opened this door, the room would have just filled with smoke. But uh, we've done it, we've swept the chimney. <laughs> I know it's just a silly little thing, but I'm so incredibly proud of myself for having done it. It's another new skill that I've learned through doing, through trying, through having a go. And you know, it, we were in the position where the flue was blocked. So I couldn't make it any worse. We couldn't light the fire. So it was either have a go, sweep the chimney, have a go. It either works or it doesn't. If it works, we've gained something. If it doesn't, we've lost nothing apart from, in this case, a few pounds on the material. So yeah, really, 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 really happy guys. And uh, yeah, another day, another great day. What more can I say? What more can I say? Right, so that's gonna wrap this one up. Thanks ever so much for watching, guys. Please make sure you do all of those good things before you go. Press that like button, subscribe to my channel, leave me a comment down below. And also, I don't mention it here enough, but I should. Please do come and check out the podcast if you're not familiar with it. Self-Sufficient Hub Podcast. We drop three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also, please just consider becoming a Patreon of the show, of the channel, and helping me to support myself to find the time to do the things that I'm doing to produce this content. It uh, really does make a huge, huge difference. All those links are in the description below. And uh, yeah, that's it. Also, share me. Share me with someone else. Give the gift of Carl. And uh, I will uh, speak to you guys really soon. Cheers.